Welcome to the Binge Breakers Podcast. I'm Jacqueline. I am here to teach you how I overcame bulimia and my binge eating disorder and how you can too. Through simple steps of mind management, repairing your relationship with yourself, understanding your habits, and intuitive eating. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Binge Breakers Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about shoulda, woulda, coulda. And it's the I should have mindset. It's the I should be doing this. I should be here. I should be better already. This shouldn't be taking too long. This shouldn't be happening. I should somehow be better than what I am right now. Life should be happening differently. It's that mindset and it pertains to bulimia. And I want to go over to this because I am hearing it a lot. There's a lot of should haves in my client coaching right now, in the private uh, coaching community that I have. There's all those things going on. But I want to give you a little life update on what's going on. So, um, first of all, I'm moving. I'm moving across the country. And I know those of you that follow me on Instagram and all of you clients of mine, you know this. But for you podcast listeners, I am moving from Colorado to Florida. So crazy move. It's going to be a long time. And I just found out that I can't just tow my car. I have to drive my car all the way across the country on top of a moving van, which my boyfriend and I did not want to do. So this is, it's all fun. It's all great. But I'm pre-recording these episodes for you guys so that I can continue to put out content for you. I want to make sure that I talk to you guys each week. So that's what's happening. I may be a little bit MIA on Instagram. Instagram and busy, but once I get to the location, hopefully it'll all be good. <laughs> but it's happening fast. It's happening soon. So as you're listening to this, I will be moving tons of boxes around my house. I'll be wearing old clothing, and my boyfriend and I will be putting things into a moving van and hauling me and him and Anubis all the way across, Anubis is my little dog, all the way across the country to Florida, Miami. So I'm so excited. We visited Miami in March and I really quite honestly fell in love with the city, really loved a lot of the culture there and the music and the artwork and the sea and the beach. So excited. So any of you guys that live in Miami, DM me. Love to get to know you. Love to get to know the community. Aside from that, I bet you guys noticed that my sound quality sounds better, and that is because I'm not recording these podcasts on video. It's just audio recording, and there's a reason for that. I was at first recording the past few weeks I've been recording on my computer, the podcast episodes, because then I could film myself talking, and I thought that it would be nice to upload those videos to YouTube. And I was liking putting those videos on YouTube. So those of you guys that like to see me talk, you could watch me. However, there's a secret to why the audio is so bad on those videos and why they're so much better now. And for now, I don't have a proper mic. So I've been using a location that is padded, um, <laughs> more soundproof padded, so that the audio quality is bumped up without me having a super nice recording equipment, a super nice microphone. So that's why the audio recording is, the audio quality is better on this episode. However, once I get to Miami, I'm going to be ordering a new mic and hopefully the sound quality will go up and then I can record those videos on YouTube again. However, I do not get much traction on YouTube. I have way more followers here on the podcast. We're approaching 20,000 downloads. Probably within the next month, I'll be at 20,000 downloads for the podcast, which is crazy. Anyway, but YouTube, not so much. So I figured I'd really much rather focus on giving you guys a quality sounding podcast and make sure that that is the utmost quality for you guys. I want to make sure that not only am I offering you valuable content, but I'm also giving you a, a nice sounding episode. But if you want to stick around for a little secret of how I make this recording sound so much better, even though I don't have the fanciest equipment in the world, stay tuned till the end. I'll give away the secret. You guys are going to laugh at the thought of where I record my episodes and why it sounds better. So I'll, sh I'll give you a little insight into my fancy life. <laughs> um, but anyway, on to the episode. I want to talk about... This should have mindset. And now I touched on this a little bit, I believe, in one of my episodes where it's like top five mindsets that are holding you back from recovery. But I see this a lot. And it was something I commonly struggled with in bulimia. And 
a lot of people DM me on Instagram and they say, I should, I've been trying to recover for a year now and I should be farther than I am. And then I have clients that I coach where they will binge and purge and then they'll turn around to themselves and they'll say, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't be still doing this. I'm in the program. I've invested money. I shouldn't be binging and purging still. I should know better. I should be getting better by now. A lot of people will be like, I'm 30 years old, I shouldn't have bulimia, or I'm 60 years old, I shouldn't be struggling with these things anymore. Um, I, that was a common one for me. When I was, when I first fell into binge eating, I literally sat, and I remember this very vividly because it was my first time binging and then vomiting, and I, I thought to myself, you were so, you're too old for this. I was 22, yeah, and I said, you're too old for this, you should know better. Why are you doing this? I just kept using the should have mindset. And I want you to call out your brain every time you do this because it's not helping you. So what if you should have done it differently? Should have is just, it's useless. It's the shoulda, woulda, coulda mindset. It's like, well, you should have done it. Sure. Maybe you should have done something else, but you didn't. So let's move on. Should have is such a shame complex. You have this shame built up around, I should be doing something differently, but something that really changed for me in my recovery is when I dropped the should have mindset because I had all of these arbitrary expectations of myself. I expected that I was supposed to be this perfect human being and I was supposed to be this person who did everything perfectly and even though I had struggled with binge eating for so long, binging and purging for so long, and clearly I had a problem and clearly I didn't have things together, I still thought that my recovery was supposed to be flawless and I thought that I was supposed to just one day figure it all out and it would get better and I wouldn't ever have to struggle again. I thought it would just go away. That is not the case. Recovery is never linear progress is not linear. And I think James Clear in his book Atomic Habits really aligns it well. He has this little chart. I forget what chapter it's in. But there is this chart where it's the line of expectations versus reality of how progress is to be made. And your expectation is that your progress line is just going to go from zero to 100 in the straight linear line. But what really happens is you start to make progress and then there's this valley this valley in the curve, and then the curve at the very end goes up and just continues propelling upwards towards the progress that you want to make. But when you try to do something differently, when you're trying to recover, when you're trying to break a new habit, there's this point of what he called it and what a lot of people call it is the valley of despair. And actually, my business coaching, I have a business coach, and I'm getting coaching to amplify my business. It's called the river of misery, is what they like to call it. But it's this point where you're stuck in the progress zone, and you're trying to recover, you're trying to do different things, you have, um, you're trying to break your habits, you're trying to be aware of your thoughts, you're trying to not eat so much food, you're trying to break up with bulimia, you're making all these identity shifts and it feels like something should be happening. It feels like you're like, okay, I have done all these things, I should be here now, this should be happening. And it feels that way in business sometimes, especially when you first start to be an entrepreneur, you put a shingle out there and you think, people will just come running to work with me. That's not how it works. It does not work that way. And so you do all these things, you're trying really hard, it feels like progress should be happening, but it's not. And that's because things take time. Progress is not linear. And sometimes you'll go down before you go up. And that sucks. I'm sorry that that's the case. But with bulimia, especially, you're breaking such a crazy habit. Food addiction, you know, call it what you want. Bulimia is an addiction. Maybe it's not chemically addicting, maybe it's not like alcohol or smoking, but for me, it was a very real addiction. I prioritized binge eating over my relationship. I prioritized binge eating over my own health, over my own value of life. The only things that I cared about were food, the pleasure of food, the highs of eating food, and numbing myself out to the world in whatever capacity I could. I didn't want to feel anything other than the highs of eating food and complete numbness. I used to wish to be unconscious. 
I remember a lot of times, and sometimes when I'm still stressed out, I'm like, I just want to sleep. I don't want to deal with the stress of what's going on right now. But I'm much better at handling my emotions now, so I kind of throw that mindset aside. But when I was bulimic, I really just had this desire to be unconscious all the time. That is a hard desire to break. It takes time. You don't just go one day, I'm fine, to, or one day I'm struggling hardcore to the next day, I'm perfectly fine, nothing's wrong, everything's great. That is not how it works. You're going to go up, down, you're going to make progress, and then you're going to take two steps backwards, and you're going to binge and purge again. But what happens is with that should have mindset, instead of when you're trying to recover, when you're trying to make progress, instead of after you make a mistake, say you binge and purge after eight days of progress and not binging and purging and abstinence. The people that are going to that recover versus the people that aren't are the people that turn around, will look at that binge and purge session that just happened and ask themselves, why did I do that? What happened? They look at it compassionately. They look at it with this patient eye. They look at it with this curiosity and they try to figure out why they did it in a nice way, they diagnose their thoughts. They're like, okay, what convinced me? What, when you get down to it, why did I binge and purge anyway? I know that I'm trying not to do that. So what happened? They don't beat themselves up over it. And then afterwards, they pick up that whole situation. They dust themselves off and they move on. They don't continually use this should have mindset against them. They don't, after they've diagnosed everything that happened with a binge and purge session, they don't say, you should have done better. You should have made that change. You shouldn't have done it in the first place. You should be this perfect being that I want you to be. You should be better by now. You should be completely, you should have never had bulimia. That's useless. That is a completely useless mindset. The people that don't recover, the people that they turn their mistakes into this whipping tool and they constantly are lashing themselves with, I should have been better, I shouldn't have done that, why are you so stupid, why do you keep making the same mistakes, you're a failure. And they say these things over and over to themselves again, and they believe them. They let that inner bully, that inner bulimia, in, and they start to believe it. But as we know, if you listen to me at all, and you've heard me repeat it time and time again, your thoughts aren't always true. You have so many thoughts all the time, not all of them are true. Your brain doesn't get everything right. It's your job to stand up to that bulimia bully. It's your job to say, no, we're not thinking that way anymore. And we're moving on. And we're going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on going in this river of misery. I'm going to keep on going into this valley of disappointment till I reach the other side of the valley. Because right now in recovery, it does. It feels like a valley of disappointment. Again, you're doing all those things. You're putting in the work. You're journaling. You're being more mindful. You're not letting food take up your entire life, and yet you're still binging and purging, and you think something should be happening. I should be cured by now. Reco recovery should be over. I should already have it. And then also, you look at other people around you, and you point to them and say, oh, they're, they're already healed or they're recovered, and they started at the same time as me, supposedly, I should be doing that. I should be, I should be like them. You're comparing yourself to others. You're causing yourself even more pain. But the thing is, that person's different than you. Maybe they figured something else out that you didn't. And what's really cool is in my private Facebook community, in my course, it's really neat to watch people share their struggles and their achievements. Hopefully the people in that group, I encourage these people in the group all the time to learn from achievements and learn from struggles and failures. And when you look at someone, you compare them to you and you ask them, hey, what are you doing? What did you, how did you get through that? It doesn't do you any good to look at someone else and say, I should be like them. Also, you don't know what their journey has been like. You don't know if they're lying. You don't know if it actually took them that long. You don't know what they went through what's going on, your circumstances are completely different from theirs. So stay in your own lane, put your blinders on. Other people don't matter. And it's not a reason to say I should have. And quite honestly, the should have mindset, should have, would have, could have mindset, really just waste your time. It's just a waste of time. It's just indulging in these emotions of I should be better. It just spins your wheels. And it doesn't get you closer to recovery. So when you think things like that, it's really important to highlight it to understand, hey, my brain is just doing this thing that we always do, where we say, I should have been this way, I should have been that way. 
it's really important to stop yourself in that moment and recognize what you're doing. Recognize that those thoughts that you're having are not valuable to you. They're not helping you and they're holding you back. Be aware of it. Give those thoughts some airtime and then move on and say, you know what? We're doing all that we can right now. Maybe we'll look and see what we can improve upon and then we're going to keep on going. We're not going to stop because people that don't recover also, they give up on themselves. They get into that river of misery. They get into the valley of disappointment. The, they're right on the cusp of improving exponentially. They're right on the cusp of recovering, but they turn around and they go back to their old habits because they think that they're never going to get there. They say, I should have already been there. So if I should have already been there, then I'm never going to get there. And I'm just going to go back to my old ways because at least then I got to experience some pleasure with food. At least then I got to experience the highs of binging and purging. And I had this little secret of bulimia, which is kind of fun in some ways. At least it was a little bit comforting. And at least I know that part of my life. At least I know what bulimia is like. I don't know how long this recovery process is going to take. So because I don't know it, I'm just going to I'm just going to go back. I'm just going to go back to the way it was, even though I was completely miserable in that mindset. And those of you guys that are in the should have mindset, look at what you've done already, especially if you're in the process of recovering. If you're not in the process of recovering, that's totally fine. Then you need to focus on the should have of I shouldn't be bulimic. Then you have to be like, well, I am bulimic. So what are we going to do about it? It's time to cut out the should have mindset. You are bulimic. So accept that fact and figure out how to get out of it because it doesn't have anything to do with you as a person. Bulimia is just a habit. It's just a behavior. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean you are literally bulimic. It just means it's like saying someone is fat when it really just means that person has excess fat. They're not the same thing. You are not actually fat. You're not actually bulimia. You just have this behavior of bulimia and you can break it. But those of you guys that are in recovery, those of you guys that are trying to recover right now and you've been recovering for, I don't care if it's been a day or it's been a few months, it's been years, doesn't matter. If you're in the mindset where it's like, I should have been recovered by now, my recovery is not going well, I should be much better than I am already, I want you to take a step back and look at the progress that you've made. And I don't care if it's just a little bit of progress or it's a lot of progress in your eyes. That's all arbitrary anyway. Look at the progress that you've made and understand that you are making strides towards a better you. That if you don't give up on yourself, that you can have a much better life. What you've done is better than where you were. Honor the old you. Don't, you know, say, I'm so much better than the past me. I can't believe I was over that way. But remember that you're making constant improvements. And even if your life is not perfect and newsflash, your life is never ever going to be perfect. You're always going to have problems. It's just that when you don't have bulimia in your life, those problems get easier to deal with. With recovery, you learn so much about yourself. In that valley of disappointment, in that river of misery, that is where you learn so much about yourself. You learn how to deal with the pain. You learn how to not go numb. You learn how to handle your thoughts, your emotions. You get to be so much more present in your life. It is simply amazing. It's like you're doing a really hard workout and you're really pushing your strength. You're really trying to get stronger. You have to go through the pain and discomfort to get to the other side, to get to that new PR in the gym. Improvement often never comes without discomfort. It never comes without pain. But you just have to keep on pushing through. And you're not going to be able to push through if you keep on saying, I should have. I should be better. I should be doing this differently. It does not matter. I shouldn't have done that. It doesn't matter. You can't go back and change the past. No one can time travel, as far as I know. <laughs> you can't go back and change that past. So why are you arguing with it? Why are you arguing with what already has been happening? What, what already is? There's no point. It literally is just wasting your time. It's wasting your precious time. Life is valuable. Life is not just something that is all granted. You're not guaranteed another day. You're not guaranteed a long life. You're guaranteed what you have right now. That's it. My suggestion is to not waste that time saying I should have done something differently when you can't go back and change it anyway. Move on. Forgive yourself for what you mistakes you made. Forgive yourself for anything that you regret in the past and move on with your life. Pack it up. Say, here's what I could have done differently and I will try to implement that in the future. I'm going to learn from this, but I'm not going to beat myself up over it. That's done. 
We're not going to think this way anymore. It's wasting our precious time. And your time is precious. It really is. You may not think that you're that valuable. You may think, what's my time worth anyway? But I am going to let you know you're a human with a very valuable ability to think and create and choose things for your life. A lot of other animals don't get that privilege to be able to think in the way that we do, to make decisions ahead of time, to create new lives for themselves. You have that privilege and you have that ability right now. You have so much untapped creativity that you don't even choose to see. I believe everyone has so many ideas that they just let go. Don't waste that. Look forward to when you're going through this valley of disappointment, when you're going through the mindset of, I should have done this already, I should be here, I should already be recovered. Remember that you are going on this journey for something better. You're gonna, you're learning right now. You're going through the pain. And remember why you're going through that pain of discomfort. The temporary highs of bulimia, they're not worth it. They're, they're simply not worth it. They're not what you think that they are. They're just temporary relief to you not wanting to feel your emotions, to you trying to ignore your day. But when you get rid of that temporary high, you open your world up to the pleasure and the pain that you've been missing out on, but it gets so much better and you genuinely get to enjoy life again. And you get better at dealing with all the problems in your life. They're still there, but you understand how to handle them. You understand how to be present with them. And there's not this leech on your shoulder that is bulimia. So I know that that was a quite of a ranty episode. I feel very different now that I am in my normal recording area. I feel like this is like the where it all started. So it's it's good to be back here. And I feel as though when I'm just recording, I'm not looking at any video. So I can just kind of rant and talk to you guys. I feel like I'm literally talking to someone when I'm just not recording my face. There's no video attached to it. So I'll try to get better when I do record video to be more personable and everything like that, but I, I really hope that this episode resonated with you, and I hope that you just stop wasting your time and you're able to recognize that mindset if you're struggling with it. Just stop it right now. Just recognize your brain's doing that and move on with it. It's not helping you. It's just, it's wasting your valuable time. So I just, I see this all the time with my clients and with people in the program and and with people that reach out to me on DMs and Instagram. It's such a common issue, and I just if I had known that I had that mindset for so long and that I could just stop it, my life probably would have been better, but shoulda, woulda, coulda, so it doesn't matter. I went through that river of misery so I could be teaching you guys now. A lot of the things that I went through, the growing pains of breaking up with the bulimia, the growing pains of recovering, all of that helped me and all of it helped me grow into the person that I never knew I had the potential to be. And now I'm here creating a podcast, helping other people recover from such a life-sucking problem and habit that is bulimia. So if, but if I had turned around, if I had said I should be better by now, and I had turned around and given up all hope, I wouldn't be here today. So I hope that that resonated with you. I also just recorded a really amazing interview with Seth Barner. Um, he's on Instagram, but I really, really love doing this interview with him. I feel like we could have talked for a long time afterwards, and he really, I really align with what he's saying, and I feel like he's a very thoughtful person, and so I'm so excited to bring him on the podcast, especially for you men out there listening. I'm, I'm so pumped to have him on the show and share that interview with you guys, so stay tuned. That'll be coming out on Saturday, and for the secret, so... <laughs> This is really, it's it's pretty embarrassing, and I actually learned that people do this from Jenna Kutcher's podcast, and I'm not actually a huge fan of that podcast, if I'm being completely honest, um, but I did listen to her podcast on how she record, like how to create a podcast, you know, on a budget or whatever. I forget what the episode is. But I didn't, when I started this podcast, I didn't have a professional mic, and I still don't, which is kind of sad. I should just buy a mic. But Jenna mentioned that she actually records her podcast still in her closet, her walk-in closet. It's like this little extra closet. And the reason she does it is the clothes absorb the sound, and it kind of acts like sound panels, and it makes the sound quality better. 
And so I kid you not, guys, all the episodes that I have recorded that have much better sound quality and the episode that I'm recording currently, I'm literally sitting in my walk-in closet. I And I'm sitting on the floor. I put like a little pillow down and I sit on the, reco- the floor and I have... Um, <laughs> I have my computer out in front of me, and I have my headphones on, and I am surrounded by my hanging clothes, and they absorb the sound. They absorb the echo really nicely. So if you guys listened in the previous couple episodes, it's been very echoey and pitchy. And I know that my sound quality is not perfect now, but it's way better than the sound quality that is on those other episodes. So that is why the sound quality is so much better on this one. It's a little embarrassing, but you know what? It's kind of cozy. It's kind of intimate and cozy. I feel pretty safe talking here. Like I can just talk about anything. Like I'm sharing secrets. It just feels very intimate. And that's probably what helps with the podcast, quite honestly. So there you have it. Whenever you listen to me, you can know that I am sitting on the floor of my closet talking with you. So (laughs) that's a confession. Anyway, I'm pre-recording all these episodes, so I will see you in the next one. And when I get to Miami, I'll definitely let you guys know how the move went. And hopefully you'll see me in a brand new office and everything. I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Hey, if you like this episode, you have to come check out the Binge Breakers Recovery Course. If you're trying to recover from bulimia and you're sick of doing it alone and you feel like you've tried a lot of traditional therapies and it's not working with you, come join the course. Go to bingebreakers.com slash recovery dash course.